alive. Come on, show me you're alive. Oh, I thought you were taking your ring off. <laughs> and furthermore, I don't want to be married to you anymore. <laughs> Hi, I'm David Foster. And I'm Catherine McPhee. And this is Billboard News. Welcome back to Billboard News. I'm Rania Niftos, and I'm so honored because we're here today with David Foster and Catherine McPhee. Hi. What's up, folks? Woohoo! Live studio audience. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell. We're finally in the Christmas spirit. You guys have your Christmas album, your second Christmas album together. Tell me a bit about why you decided to give it another go. It's not really a second Christmas album. The way we look at it is that it's like one complete album. Most albums had about, what, 13 tracks on it? Right. So now <clears throat> we've just combined the two last we did year. seven and seven, seven last Yeah, seven so it's three. like one big album. So you can now get the whole thing in one sort of bundle and... It's called Christmas songs, you know why? Why? <laughs> hey Siri, play Christmas songs. <laughs> to be fair, it probably doesn't hurt the algorithm, right? The SEO to get it up at the top Smart if girl. someone's looking up Christmas songs, right? <laughs> and you guys did your first part of Christmas songs last year. It was your first time in the studio together in what? 17 years since yeah. you were on American Idol? It's now been 18 years. I mean, we'd work together a lot, mm -hmm. but... Um, we toured together a lot, but that 18 years ago is when I produced her very first single, off the Idol show. Um, Summer of the Rainbow. Of the Rainbow. Someday I wish a star. Which became kind of a, in all modesty, kind of a, you know, a career song for you. It's a song that <laughs> has followed me wherever I go. But I did originally sing it on American Idol, so let's just remember that it was based off of that version, not okay. just what yes, David Foster Michael Orland. did. No, but it was a, an amazing day when I went to a studio. Um, I was born and raised in LA, so it was very cool to get in my own car and drive to Malibu in his beautiful studio and and um, and yeah and so I do do that song a lot but that was the kind of first and few times that we were in the recording studio together until we were actually you know making a Christmas each day. other's ball and chain. You know? <laughs> well, what made that? What helped you bridge that gap? I guess you like you're married, you've worked together, you've toured together, you've sang together. Why were you like okay, let's get in the studio and make? some Christmas music. You know, there was a pandemic, you remember that? I, I think I remember it. So everybody was locked down, <laughs> the whole world, yeah. and we were inside and we had a new baby, and um, and we just started messing around with the piano and then we started going live on Instagram. We literally thought that we would just put <clears throat> this, a few songs out on, on our own, just independently, and then uh, your friend, longtime colleague, Tom Wally, mm -hmm. decided to sort of take over the project and release it for us on their on a real label on, on a real record label so it, honest, it honestly just started as something in our living room like it really wasn't something that we were going to be thought we were going to be actively promoting right. but here we are at mm -hmm. billboard this year bring in the christmas cheer the foster family way with great music and great company and i can imagine that that's probably the most the healthiest most natural way i guess to be in a marriage and also have a working relationship is let yeah. things kind of flow naturally, I'm guessing. Yeah, for sure. I'm about to go to New York for like two months, starting tomorrow. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, uh. So uh, we'll see how healthy we, see how we do. Catherine and I are going to be hitting the town and that's really kind of what We're going to come visit you. Give me five. Come on, show me your life. Oh, I thought you were taking your ring off. <laughs> oh, no, that would have so been a sad. wild billboard exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> and furthermore, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Well, how did you guys even decide on which Christmas songs, I guess, to put out first and then the you second know, it's, half? It's not scientific. It's really a matter of like, you know, I'd get up, have a coffee, and I'd look at the piano, I'd go, mm -hmm. just walk over there, and I'd just start playing, you know, White Christmas. Hey, come and try this. I'm I'll dreaming. I'll be home for right. Christmas. No, that's not White Christmas. I know, but. So in one of the other tracks, Carol of the Bells, um, is a song that I did many, many years ago as an instrumental. And we took it. Right. So we redid it and with uh, some singers along classic. with Kat singing on it as well to make it sort of a half vocal, half instrumental. It's definitely not is, a featured vocal Well, moment. but it, it's great it's, because it it's features me on the piano yes. and you on vocals. So we just thought it would be nice for him to have a few tracks that really just highlight him, right? Mm -hmm. Because 
But it also must be cool to use your voice in that way too. That's something yeah. that's not the most traditional. We did like that. Exactly. We did that right? also with uh, We Three Kings, which yeah. we went for like an Enya. I loved Enya growing up. Like just that was a real middle school right. jam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm guessing that Rania's Christmas go-to okay. is the Mariah Carey song. Well, I mean, it has been oh, number one on the I Billboard know. charts, Forever. and I am a Billboard writer. What's your favorite thing about working with each other in the studio? She sings great. Mm -hmm. And for as a producer and somebody who's kind of a control freak and a I um, listen to a you. Stickler. Yeah, you do. Sometimes. I do. I, most of the time. Well, for instance, we were recording yesterday. Right. A demo. <laughs> no, I was doing you a favor is what right. I was doing. Right. For a demo for my musical Betty Boop that's coming How opening many in favors Chicago. have I done for you? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. And I was like, okay, you could try it. And she just grabs the paper. Okay, let's go. Like, your attitude was like less really? than great. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, let's get into this. <laughs> Catherine, your side of the story now. <laughs> She's smart. This is, this is uh, couples therapy is what right. we really... Our new segment here. Yeah, what are you right. talking about? I didn't do that yesterday. I did that the day before right. yesterday. No, yesterday but, but you fun. asked like what we like each other. Right. Each other. Yeah, I was going to say, <clears throat> stay with the positive, Dave. Jeez. I, I started by saying I love your voice and she's easy to direct. She sings so Thank in tune. Thank you. And I love that. My grown-up Christmas oh, list yes. written by David Foster. Do you remember me? It's easy. It's really easy. Yeah, it is easy. And it always was easy in the studio with him. And honestly, it hasn't changed that much from my experience with him when I was 21, fresh off the idol stage, to, to now. I mean, yeah, I mean, I probably am a little bit more opinionated with certain mm -hmm. things because, you know. You should I've learn grown. from Celine more, okay? 15 years, she never said a word. I'm she just sure, said, tell me what you want I'm me to sure sing. I'm sure she pushed Every back day. here no, and there. No, never. Are you telling me she never. was just a submissive Never. Little, I don't think so. Yes, she was. Celine's a very strong no. woman. We just gotta get Celine in here now. <laughs> just tell me what to sing. Well, you know what? I'm so glad that that's what makes you happy. Yeah. Am I right, Kim? Someone who listens to exactly what she's you not, say. She's not, staying out of it. Can we get Celine on the phone and get to the bottom of this? <laughs> everything I am because you You've become quite the king of Christmas. You've worked with Michael Bublé, Barbara Streisand. What is it about this time of year that gets you in the creative mood? I'll tell you what, what it really is, is that um, as a producer, you know, you're always chasing. You're always wanting a hit. You're always wanting to be on the billboard charts. I mean, the iconic billboard charts. So you're always chasing. With Christmas, you truly get a free pass. Right. There's no, you can't be too corny, and everything works, and you don't have to quote unquote, make a hit. Mm -hmm. You just have to do something that feels good with these amazing songs. So I, I pride myself in delving in deep and every, every year when I was doing those Christmas albums, every year with Josh Groban and Michael Bublé and Celine and Barbara, as you said, and Dolly Parton and then so many of them. You every, probably loved the, the non-pressure. The well, yeah, the non-pressure. The non-pressure. And the challenge of doing the songs different. Yeah, and that's what's kind of nice about Christmas music too, right? Because you'll have all these artists release Christmas songs and we have kind of the same rotation of Christmas songs, but you still enjoy every version just as much. And I think that that's what's really cool is that they're so versatile. Yeah, and it's true. It's really great, I yeah. love that. Yeah. And of course, you guys have a beautiful family and you must have some Christmas traditions that we have to talk about since we are in the festive season. Well, this will be the first year that we'll share it with our son because he's now just old enough to start getting excited. He'll be three, or almost three. Yeah, I mean, last year he was too young, but I always love to go a little bit crazy and decorate everywhere. So that always felt like a tradition in my family growing up was that the day after Thanksgiving, we pull out all the decorations yeah. and just start decorating, put the Christmas music on, all the classics and have them in rotation and just kind of go to town. And now I, I have a little helper. He's at that age where he's not really that good of a helper, but he wants to help. It's gonna be a great age. season. We're yeah. very excited about so it. So exciting. Lastly, clearly you guys have such a wonderful bond. And so what do you think is the key to kind of a long lasting relationship that also is like a friendship? I'll, I'll pass that over to you. <laughs> I'm like, you're asking him. <laughs> oh, don't be so mean. <laughs> it's a little comical, come on. This is so. <laughs> 
listen, when we're talking about hope here in the <laughs> No, I think actually, Dave, I think you, sh you should, David, mm -hmm. I think you should answer that. Uh, What's the you thing know, you, you, you don't enjoy doing? Um, arguing. <laughs> oh, digging deep. Yes. Oh, I hate Having it. real conversations about it. real things. I oh, so keep it fun, keep yeah. it exciting. Keep it light. Yeah, I mean, that's good. <laughs> You know, just uh, keep it real shallow, Folks, real surfacey. <laughs> if your marriage is in trouble, just remember this one thing from a very experienced person. Keep it light. No, honestly, speaking truth in kindness and in love is the best recipe for keeping a relationship, any relationship, but particularly a marriage. You can say hard things and do hard things if you do them with and say them with kindness and love. Even yeah. when you do that, it yeah. works well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm so glad we got this all worked yeah. out here today. <laughs> it was, nice it was you, so Rania. nice to meet you guys. <laughs> Thank you for coming in today. <laughs> <laughs>